Hi there, I'm Sharon Olszewski from Pineapple Paper Company, and today we're going to talk about the four main types of craft lasers, CO2, diode, infrared, and fiber lasers. Before we get started, this is a pretty brief video, and it's intended for beginners to lasers. If you're looking to buy a laser, or you want to know more about craft lasers, this is the video for you. We're going to talk about the four main types of craft lasers. Three of them are more common, one is not as common. We're going to talk about the technology, how each one works, materials, and projects you can use with each laser. And we're going to talk about the pros and cons of each type of laser, so that way you can help decide which laser is right for you. If you're seriously considering buying your own craft laser, maybe for a small business or just because you like crafting, make sure you head over to this website, pineapplepaperco.myflowdesk.com slash free laser ebook. I'll put the link in the comments below. You can download this free ebook, no strings attached. It has all of the basic information you need to know about when you're buying your first laser. The first kind of laser we're gonna talk about are CO2 lasers. CO2 lasers you might have heard of include the x -Tool P2 and the Glowforge Basic and Pro models. I actually have both of those. CO2 lasers are named from the tube that is inside these big machines. It's full of gases, including mostly carbon dioxide. When electricity hits that tube, light energy is produced, and then it, the machine focuses that light into a laser beam. They come in several different kinds of power. They usually start around 40 watts. This P2 actually has 55 watts of optical power. This is much more power than you see with other kinds of lasers. In addition, the wavelength of light that the CO2 laser produces is 10,640 nanometers. The wavelength of light that a laser beam produces is actually pretty important. That's what determines what materials the laser that you purchase will interact with. And by interact, I mean vaporize. Here are some materials that interact well with CO2 lasers, including all kinds of acrylic, especially clear, plywood, wood, People buy CO2 lasers because they can pretty much cut and engrave anything. CO2 lasers do work with other things like fabric, paper, cardboard, um, some metals it can engrave or mark. And really, that's the important thing to note is that CO2 lasers interact with mostly everything. Here are two projects that I use clear acrylic for. I engraved a pre-made pen cup as well as made this bridal shower sign that is engraved and cut out of clear acrylic. So let's talk about the pros and cons of a CO2 laser. The pros are it is powerful. Because it is powerful, they are pretty fast in the grand scheme of things, and the more powerful they get, the thicker materials they can handle. Current craft laser machines can cut up to almost three quarters of an inch thick material. Not all of them, but some of them. Again, they can handle most materials and they are precise. You can engrave and cut things that are very detailed and very fine. The cons include the size and the price. CO2 lasers, like my P2, they're big. My machine is housed on this large Husky workbench and it takes up a pretty big portion of my office. Plus it needs to be near a window so that way you can ventilate it. If you have a small office space, a CO2 laser is going to be pretty hard to fit but you can keep it outside in a garage as long as it is temperature controlled. Another con is the price. CO2 lasers are some of the more expensive lasers that you'll see on the market they start at a minimum of a few thousand dollars and go up from there. Currently, a Glowforge Pro is um, somewhere between six and seven thousand dollars, and the P2 is um, right around five thousand dollars. So let's move on to diode lasers. Diode lasers include the Xtool S1, F1, D1 Pro, M1, and also the Glowforge Aura is a diode laser. Diode lasers use semiconductor diodes. Electricity is applied to semiconductive materials and it releases photons. The diodes are designed, they have mirrors in them and they deflect the energy through a lens creating a laser beam. You can combine multiple diodes into a diode bank and that increases the energy output. Because of the power bank situation, uh, diode lasers can vary greatly in range of power. This is the X-Tool S1 40 watt diode and you can see it in comparison to the P2. It is a much smaller machine. Other diodes, including the M1 and the Glowforge Aura, start at 4 to 5 watts of power, which, again, the higher power, the thicker materials you can handle, as well as the faster the machine will be. Powerful diodes can handle similar materials to CO2 lasers, with one exception, clear acrylic. 
Here you have some wood and dark acrylic that a diode laser can handle. It can cut and engrave all materials like this. And again, the more powerful, the thicker materials it can handle. Because their wavelength is much smaller, it does not interact with clear materials. Here you can see some really great engraved and cut projects I made with my diode. Let's talk about the pros and cons of diode lasers. They are affordable. Smaller, less powerful diodes can start around $1,000 or a little less, and then they go up the more power you get. 40 watt X-Tool S1 will run you a couple of thousand dollars. Still much cheaper than a CO2 with a little bit of the same functionality. They are efficient, they don't take a lot of power, they are much smaller, and they last a lot longer than CO2, although both last pretty long. The cons of diodes, they're getting smaller as the power and the technology of diode lasers increases. Diodes can handle almost all materials that a CO2 laser can handle, like wood, some colors of acrylic, MDF, leather, most paper and fabric products. But what they don't handle is important to some people. They do not handle or interact with clear or transparent core acrylic. You cannot cut it and you cannot engrave it unless you have some sort of marking medium. This is a turnoff for some laser buyers, but if it is not something that you're interested in making with your laser, then a diode could be a great choice for you. Let's move on to infrared lasers. Infrared lasers include uh, the X-Tool F1, the S1, and the D1 Pro. The X-Tool F1 has a built-in infrared laser, and the S1 and the F1 have add-on laser modules that you can purchase. I own both the X-Tool F1 as well as the uh, infrared module for the X-Tool S1. Infrared lasers also use diode to produce light. They are named for the wavelength of light that they emit, which is 1064 nanometers, which is in the infrared spectrum. Infrared lasers are sometimes confused with fiber lasers, which also operate in the infrared spectrum, but infrared lasers are locked in at a lower wattage at 1064 nanometers. What's great about them is that they can be packaged in really small machines, or like I said before, you can actually buy them as an add-on module to other diode lasers. The most important thing to remember about infrared lasers is they interact with metal. Infrared lasers can mark or engrave any metal with no limitations. CO2 and diode lasers do have some limitations when working with metal. Here are some blanks that I've used with the X-Tool F1 including keychains, um, various types of jewelry blanks, dog tags, as well as metal business cards. And they work great engraving. They do not cut metal. That is the one limitation, but they do interact and engrave all of them. The F1 is great because you can take pre-made blanks and that's the thing with infrared is because you can't cut them. You're kind of restricted to cutting them with another type of laser or just um, engraving on pre-made blanks, but the results are great and they're fast. They are detailed and I think um, those keychains I made in like 40 seconds, infrared lasers are quick. So let's talk about the pros and cons. Pros of an infrared laser are the materials. You can work with metals that do not interact with other machines. They're pretty affordable because they're simple in design and construction and small. You can buy one for around $1,000, sometimes less. Add-on modules run maybe five to six hundred dollars. I mentioned how fast they were and again the size very compact machines but because of that add-on you can make bigger projects in a larger machine that has that add-on module. If adding jewelry to your small business, um, personalized marked jewelry, an infrared laser module might be a great option for you but it's not something that I would specifically buy on its own. I think they work best when combined or added to a diode laser, or if you already own a CO2 laser, getting a machine that is capable of handling all of these metals. And that's a con. Really, they're for metals. Infrareds do interact with some woods and some leather, but it's only for marking, not for actually cutting all of those materials. And that's because they have such a low power. Uh, the infrared module that's in the F1, as well as the add-on, is 2 watts. You're not really getting a ton of power with an infrared module. And that brings us to fiber lasers. They are the only type of laser in the craft industry that I don't own. Fiber lasers operate in the infrared spectrum, but the light that is produced passes through a fiber optic cable. The core of that fiber optic cable determines what 
wavelength of light the laser beam will emit and therefore what type of materials it will interact with. Again, fiber lasers are for metals. This is an Omtech fiber laser. I have heard good things about the Omtech brand, but I do not have any experience with them and cannot personally recommend them. The thing about fiber lasers is that they can vary greatly in power. Fiber lasers start around 20 watts of power and they can go up to several hundred watts of power. Plus they peak even higher than that. A fiber laser can peak at 10,000 plus watts of power. It's crazy. They are not only designed to engrave metals, but also cut certain metals. This is all dependent on the more powerful of a fiber laser that you have. Let's talk about some projects. I actually just pulled up fiber laser on Pinterest. So you can see, again, they kind of get confused with infrared lasers because they are an infrared laser, but they aren't something that you're really seeing in crafts. You're seeing them more in metal signs, machinists. I um, mean, you can see here, there's some machine pieces being engraved and cut. You're also seeing them um, in like this. There's like the lighter um, gun pieces. I know someone that has a fiber laser and uses it for custom gun stocks. This is a type of machine I think that you're going to see become much uh, more available in the craft realm. And uh, let's head over to Google Images to see if we can find some more projects. Again, they do interact with wood, but it's just not really what they're made for. You can see here all the custom metal pieces. Uh, there's some car parts. They're really awesome machines, but it's just something that a lot of crafters haven't broken into yet. I'm hoping that that changes with Omtech. Uh, bringing more into the market. The problem is, is that the lower end modules, even though they're powerful, they do not operate significantly with what people want from a fiber laser. So in order to get into that range, you have to get a several thousand dollar machine. And this would be something, that, again, if you're working with only metal, it might be a good option for you. But as you can see here, the, the lower end models and to get into a 50, 100 watt, we're talking several up to $10,000. They're pretty cool. I mean, if you see those signs in the background, they work just like other lasers. They're precise, they're detailed, and they make some really cool projects. I'm excited to see what comes out of you know the production of fiber lasers in the future. So with that said, let's talk about the pros and cons. They can get really powerful. They are fast. They, of all the lasers, last the longest and you get the most cut time out of. And you can work with all metals, not only engrave, but depending on the power of your machine, you can cut metals with fiber lasers. The cost obviously is a huge con. They get real expensive real quick. I'm hoping that we see some you know, more affordable fiber lasers coming down as the technology gets more affordable. And compared to infrared, they are bigger, but honestly not that much bigger if you're looking at them. And again, you're limited to metals. They do interact a little bit with leather and wood, but it takes a lot of testing and it's not really what they're designed for. I do have an entire blog post that I will put down in the comments. Um, I go into a lot more depth about the kind of lasers, the technology and the materials they use. But the most important thing is, is that I talk about what laser you might want. I really think you need to first and foremost, think about what your budget is, what kind of materials and projects you wanna make. And of course, how much space you have. You know, if you're just a beginner, Maybe a diode is fine with you. You don't have to worry about acrylic. You know, if you're experienced though and you wanna make all the things, then maybe a CO2 laser is for you. And of course, metal, infrared and laser, fiber laser is the way to go there. Plus, I do have a free ebook. You can download it at this here. This link here, I will also put it in the comments. It's pineapplepaperco.myflowdesk.com slash free laser book. It has so much, so much information where I buy my materials and will help you decide what laser machine specifically is the right one for you. Plus, of course, in my uh, freebie library, I have over 290 pushing 300 free SVGs and more. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more of these videos and follow me on my socials. I hope to see you again.